Democrat J.D. Shulton is running for the state legislature since Sioux City's Chris Hall is retiring. Now, Shulton used to head from town to town in 2018 when he narrowly lost his campaign to unseat longtime Republican Congressman Steve King. Then he lost again two years later when he took on Randy Feenstra. The state has turned more Republican red since Shulton ran the first time. Uh, is this a one-party state? You know, uh, it is a one Probably about 0.75. I don't know. I, I don't know what the ratio is, but like it's, it, we have a lot of work to do as Democrats. But like it, it feels even different than when you ran for Congress the first time, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, the the winds aren't in the Democratic favor right now. I think that's nationally, but at the same time, uh, you see what's happening with the attack on public education, and you have a lot of people who are apolitical and a lot of teachers feeling attack right now, and and they seem pretty motivated. And the Democrats are on uh, Democrats are on their side. Uh, you say attack on education in what way, and what do you do differently? Well, I mean, when I graduated high school, and it's getting further and further away, but we were first in the nation in education, and up in Sioux City, we have teachers going across the river to South Dakota, Nebraska, to teach, and that's unheard of. Uh, Iowa used to be the place where people would want to come to. My best friend from elementary school, his family moved to Iowa for education, and just the we, we don't fund it enough, the attacks on the teachers, um, the, the culture wars on uh, public education, it's it's you know enough is enough and and uh, our state quarters the foundation in education. The Republicans have had essentially complete control of the state house since 2017, and they've been c pretty consistent about the way schools are funded with the increase. Usually about two percent or so, uh, two and a half this time around. It'll be significantly lower than the, what the inflation rate is, but. The governor is saying there's a chunk of money out there in leftover COVID money that schools can access so they can use that. But to your point, though, doesn't that show that voters support what Republicans are doing if they keep electing them? Well, I mean, there's the, the, the funding aspect of it and there's the culture war aspect of it. And I feel like we feel it far more now than we ever have. I thought the collective bargaining really set the tone and that's really changed it. And you saw a lot of Democrats had success uh, in 2018. By limiting what can be bargained Ex exactly. in contracts. And, and so I think that really was a pivotal moment in public education. And now that we're seeing, we're trying to use public funds to uh, put towards private education. Uh, I think Iowa voters are, are gonna be frustrated as they are right now. And I think uh, there's opportunity for Democrats to, to win some seats here. Democrats seem to be split on this concept of the carbon sequestration pipeline. So there are three different proposals still out there. Some like the environmental aspect where perhaps it could make ethanol plants better for the environment by running the carbon out of town. Others aren't so convinced that that's really the way to go and frankly have some concerns about ethanol. How would you lead on that issue? Well, there's no doubt that climate change, we have to start being at the forefront of, of everything. If we don't have a planet, what's, what's the issue with everything else? E education doesn't matter then. Uh, life doesn't matter, it seems like. So uh, I think we need to put climate change at the forefront. Uh, using uh, 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 the domain for, for uh, private gain, domain. Yeah, eminent domain, sorry, uh, for private gain, not a situation I want to get into. Um, it, it is, we're, we're seeing this, throughout the nation with uh, a lot of private entities uh, uh, kind of using their abuse on, on some of this stuff. Um, and uh, to be honest, like we're, we're seeing studies on both sides that are showing, uh, that are very biased on both sides. So it's really hard to believe what actually will, will be good for the climate. And, and so we're, we're kind of, it's a wait and see right now. So d do you not have an opinion? So let's uh, carbon pipeline, if it happened without eminent domain, would you be on board or not, not there yet? Uh, well, if, if they pay fair well or fair uh, farmers well and, and folks want it, it, it'd be more of a talking point than what it is right now. The other part of it, too, is we don't know what it's going to be used for. A lot of people speculate it's fracking. That's not going to improve the, 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 like, whatever we gain in the climate and in, in sequestering the carbon is going to be lost by fracking in, in the oil. So if, if it uses for that, we shouldn't be for it. Uh, 
through your previous runs and then and your your current real job, yeah. uh, you've talked a lot the last several years about the lack of quality wages mm -hmm. in our state, and that's something that's perhaps been magnified during COVID, where you have some people voluntarily leaving the workforce, some didn't have any choice but left. But we've still not recovered all of those jobs that we had pre-pandemic here. But it seems like when we're talking to people, wages keep coming up and keep coming up that this could be a lower wage state. What changes that? Well, I think raising the minimum wage is a first step. Uh, but when but we, aren't businesses essentially doing that on their own right now? I mean, we see that a little bit, but, but like here in Sioux City, uh, or uh, in Sioux City, what we see is like the meatpacking plants. Before the pandemic, $14, $16 an hour. Now they're up to about $20 an hour but that's still ridiculously hard work. And in 1984, when my family moved from Nevada to Sioux City, that was the wage they were getting back then, $14 an hour. And so uh, I, I think that's one of the biggest things is not only raising the minimum wage, we need to push for innovation uh, in, in this state because we're losing too many uh, students that I grew up with and, and people across, it's one of the, uh, across the whole state. It's one of the number one things you hear are parents uh, upset that their kids moved to Kansas City, moved to Minneapolis or, or where else. And we need to start keeping kids here and it starts by having opportunities. And we don't have that right now. And what's the legislator's role in that in promoting innovation? Uh, I think giving opportunity for entrepreneurs, like one of the biggest issues is healthcare. Um, people don't want to uh, leave their jobs to create a business because healthcare, they have young kids and, and that you hear that all the time. Uh, child care is one of the biggest things uh, that we're seeing across the state and that something came up all the time on the campaign trail out in the rural areas as well as is people didn't want to move in because you have to drive to the next town for child care and then drive to across the other way for their job. His Insider's Quick Six is next, including the first bill he says he'd propose.